This is 5 Minute Friday on Lossless LLM Weight Compression. Many recent episodes have focused on open source large language models, LLMs, that you can download and fine tune to particular use cases depending on your needs or your users' needs. I've particularly been highlighting LLMs with 7 billion up to 13 billion model parameters because this size of model can typically be run on a single consumer GPU, so it's relatively manageable and affordable both to train and to have in production. However, if you'd like to approach the capabilities of the top commercial LLMs like OpenAI's GPT-4 or Anthropic's Claude, and you want to be able to do this on a broad range of tasks, you may need a much bigger model. So wouldn't it be nice if you could compress the size of these much larger open source LLMs to be able to fit them on a single consumer GPU? Such compression would enable you to decrease training costs, to decrease model size for storage, to increase your inference speed, and in some cases, compression can even act as a regularizer so it improves the model's generalizability to data it hasn't encountered before. All right, that all sounds great, right? But the problem is that historically, compressing our model leads to lower accuracy. That changed earlier this month with a paper published by international collaborators from both academia and industry in which they revealed their SPQR approach. So SPQR stands for Sparse Quantized Representation, and this allows for near lossless LLM weight compression. This is a huge deal. The authors demonstrate being able to run a 33 billion parameter LLM on a single 24 gigabyte GPU while simultaneously allowing a 15% speed up of inference and critically, no reduction in model accuracy. To do this, they leveraged a widely used approach called quantization. So model quantization, I've talked about this on the podcast before, it's a process that reduces the memory and computational requirements of a deep learning model by representing model parameters and model activations with lower precision values. So this could be something like using integers or fixed point numbers in the place of higher precision floating point numbers. This quantization both reduces memory usage and speeds up computations. SPQR, this new method, is the first quantization method that can reach the compression ratios of other quantization methods. So this is like a four times compression. So um, getting a model down to a quarter of its size, that's a, that's a much, much smaller model. All of a sudden that means that really big LLMs you can fit on a single GPU. And SPQR gets that kind of 4X compression while being near lossless. And so that means that your model accuracy is retained. And so to allow this to happen, there are four steps to this new SPQR algorithm. In the first step, they iterate through the layers of your deep learning model and quantize the weights by converting them to a lower bit representation. So that's just normal quantization. What's new is that in step two, for each layer, they measure the inputs and the outputs of the quantized model and compare these outputs with the uncompressed model. In step three, they identify the weights whose quantization results in an outsized impact on layer output behavior. And these weights, these particular weights that have the outsized impact, these are considered to be outliers. In the fourth and final step, most of the weights, typically greater than 99% of the weights, are converted to a low bit width representation. The outliers that were identified in the preceding step, these ones are the only ones that have an outsized impact and they're extracted separately and left in their higher precision representation. The rationale behind this four-step process is that in most cases, fewer than 1% of the outlier weights result in over 75% of the overall error that is introduced by quantization. So since these weights lead to high irreducible error, SPQR just keeps them intact. Since these outliers account for typically fewer than 1% of the parameters in the model, retaining them has a negligible impact on compression while simultaneously avoiding any noticeable reduction in the model's accuracy. Really cool. Um, it's like logical. It's one of these things. It's like, why did I think of that? Um, and so, well, I didn't think of it. These authors did. And we've got the paper for you as well as the associated GitHub repo in the show notes. So you can apply SPQR to your own LLM today. Finally, if you're not just interested in compressing your model for deploying it to production, but 
you're also interested in fine tuning a big open source LLM, say a 33 billion or larger model, you'll also want to check out QLora. So QLora builds on the parameter efficient low rank adaptation, LoRa, that I introduced back in episode number 674, but now it also incorporates quantization that we've been talking about in today's episode so that you can fine tune open source 33 billion or even 65 billion parameter models on a single GPU, although admittedly a pretty darn big GPU. It's a 48 gigabyte GPU, um, but nevertheless, a single GPU. So, you know, relatively inexpensive, relatively straightforward ML ops for training. So the QLora authors made a big splash a few weeks ago when they claimed this enabled their Guanaco family of models to approach 99.3% of ChatGPT's performance on the Vicuña benchmarks that I covered back in episode number 672. The QLora approach is already integrated with Hugging Face's PEFT and Transformer libraries. We've got a link in the show notes to the GitHub repo for all the information, including access to their new Guanaco model family, which comes in four sizes, 7 billion, 13 billion, 33 billion, and 65 parameter versions. Um, note, however, that this Guanaco family of models were fine-tuned starting with Meta's Llama models. So as detailed back in episode number 670, they can't be used for commercial purposes, but you can now apply QLora to a commercial use model like Dolly 2.0 and fine tune it to whatever your desired use case is. All right, really cool. I hope you can build some amazing, powerful LLMs uh, and have them be in production with your users in no time using the approaches like QLora and SPQR that I covered in today's episode. That's it for this week. Thanks to Sean Kosla on the data science team at my machine learning company, Nebula, for much of today's SPQR content, which I got from a recent edition of his Let's Talk Text newsletter. Until next time, my friend, keep on rocking it out there, and I'm looking forward to enjoying another round of the Super Data Science Podcast with you very soon. Mm -hmm.